Hi, I'm Zoomless, and I only just now noticed that the camera's not plugged in. I don't care. Today is Friday, which means it's time for a new how to bass, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. And because I like what I'm doing here, I'm going to show you what that sounds like in context. So yeah, let's talk about this sound. Now, there's, this is uh, very sort of distorty, and if you guys have been following my 40K streams, if you've actually been watching me making it, then this actually should be kind of familiar to you. This is based on uh, a Reese design that I use a lot in this track, and actually all the other versions of it are all basically the same thing, just with varying sort of variations involved in, in the source sound, which is in this in this track here, which is also very simple. I'll show you how to do that so you can get the other results that I've got. That's one with the bad pass on it. But this guy, this guy was a lot of fun. Uh, and part of the more interesting modulation involved with it actually comes from what's going on inside the MIDI. Um, as you can see here, I actually start off with a note that has no amplitude, and I actually slide up in amplitude with a slide note. As it turns out, you can slide more than just pitch with a slide note. You can slide any other of the piano roll parameters that are available to you. You can slide panning, velocity, release time, uh, X and Y if you're using a citrus channel, and then a patch channel, and uh, the, the pitch, just regular pitch. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the slide notes as a form of sort of automation to change the volume of the note, which is this guy here. And that is all that's changing the characteristic of the sound into the distortion. We're changing essentially the pre-gain. We're doing the same thing up here. It slides up in pitch, but it slides back down to velocity and then it slides back up to velocity. And so it's giving us a very sort of interesting uh, texture as a result. Let's talk about actually creating the sound. So at the beginning, uh, we have here an oscillator that I created by making a saw wave into sine harmonics. And you do that by just having a waveform of some kind, make a saw wave, and then right click on it and say, convert the sine harmonics, it'll make you a sine harmonic. And then I dicked around with the, uh, uh, the phase, which is at the bottom. At the top is amplitude of an, any given harmonic. And the bottom is the phase of any given harmonic. And you can go in here and say randomize phases, phases, which is what I did. And as you can see, the sort of even uh, randomness of automation there. Automization, nice. And uh, then I kind of flat a couple of the bottom ones to give it more cohesion and then mess around with the last one. The lower the harmonic is, the more impact the phase will have on the overall tone of the sound. <laughs> At least of that waveform. The other guy I've got going on, this is actually turned down a bit. The other guy I've got going on is a square wave that I created inside harmonics. You can see he has uh, every other um, harmonic engaged. This is essentially the same deal. Um, I just took, um, I just did did the same deal kind of with the with the saw, only a square wave. Now this is the guy that's actually got most of the off, most of the volume going on. <laughs> I 
they're being crunched together uh, and, and varying levels of, uh, of amplitude from the two of them in combination will get you different sort of results in terms of the sound itself. Uh, the pitch, they're pitched a bit oddly. The top guy is up at uh, 2.05 and the bottom guy is down at um, uh, 1.95, which means that they're a whole 0.1 apart from each other, but they're both evenly up away from what their original note should be. So it's it does sound a bit detuny, but it doesn't it doesn't really it's evenly detuned if you sort of know what I mean. It's, it's what's up. Um, now they're going into two wave shapers. One is a regular sort of saturated looking thingy, and then one is this uh, waveform tab. If you right click on it and go to waveform, this is the smallest tension that gets you more than one uh, more than just this. You get this. This is sort of, sort of second the second smallest tension. Uh, this guy's got a chorus on it, just sort of set to taste or whatever. The point, the point of doing what I've done here was to give it a kind of uh, a different, a, a difference of everything. Something not just one path of something, so it's essentially just a split, but it's a very complex split. And then here we have a sub, but the sub doesn't, doesn't exist to give us sub reinforcement overall. Although we could use it to do that, we could bring it all the way out, and we would have extra you know, sub in the bottom. But that wasn't necessary. What this is serving to do is it's shoving the base sub level back into the wave shaper, into this third wave shaper here, so that because when this all comes together and we get the story together, uh, the sub is there to kind of give it a rounder sound. At least that's what it was used for when I created the original sound. What I'm doing here is I'm really giving it a little bit of it, so we still get a little bit of that crunch involved. The le like the more sub the sub there is, overall it changes kind of the tone of things. This guy doesn't have a lot of bass in it, and this is actually with a louder dude is over here. That's for the decisions that led to this this shape and whatever all are different. I mean, they're they weren't really made for this, but uh, it's what's what's happened to create the sound. And then it's going to this second this second EQ after this dude, and this is actually what makes the big sort of the primary aspect of the tone. Because without this EQ, that's what it sounds like. But with the EQ, it sounds more like a regular Reese. Because as it turns out, the kind of the Reese texture that we're used to hearing is a big old scoop near the 300, 300, 500 hertz range. Uh, these two parameters are activated because originally uh, this was part of a larger a larger thing and there were triggers happening. They're not happening here, so they're just there doing nothing. And then the set into compression to uh, bring back a lot of lost frequencies because when you do some stuff like that, it gets a little uneven. So we're using this primarily to bring back bass. <laughs> I'm keeping it pretty low gain so I have a lot I have more to work with when I go into the next DQ, which is mostly just a shaping thing, and then uh two more wave shapers to do again the kind of uh the kind of uh difference in layering. <laughs> and then I have two uh compressors. This this actually exists mostly to solve phasing problems. I did I wanted to compress them in different profiles, but if I only put one compressor at just one of them, they uh, the compressors themselves create latency. And so if I had not an uneven, an uneven distribution of effects on the chain uh, of these kinds that actually introduce a lot of latency. In fact, we can look at how much latency they introduce. Whoa. Uh, you latency. See, this guy's actually got latency involved because it's got the the low animation delay and the attack engaged. And this guy does not have the attack or the animation delay engaged. However, I guarantee you if I didn't have this here, it would still, if I had the other one there, it would sound phasey. And then a last, uh, a last one to give it just more crunch, because more crunch is a good crunch. And then remember the whole, essentially the the mod, the, the modding that we did in this original pattern. <laughs> I've changed something, so now it's all. That's the sub guy. I'm gonna change something over here. Well, regardless of what I actually change, you can see that um, the primary sort of the, the real interesting modulation comes from the volume control of the original sound itself. And you can actually automate this yourself just by controlling the volume from here.
if you are so inclined. However, this is an effect I use very often, so it works just fine here. Uh, yeah, I'll put this patch up for download so you can screw, screw around with it and have a good time. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.